Andrew and late diagnosed um, autistic and that was some six years ago. Um, I almost certainly, according to my ADHD friends, also have a co-occurrence of ADHD, though I haven't yet gone for a um, conf confirmatory um, diagnosis. For a neurodiversity and neurodivergence celebration week, we thought we would share a little about special interests. This is a little about my own special interests. Having lived through many decades of special interests, I almost find it difficult knowing where to start. Indeed, reflecting on them brings so many mixed emotions, which I actually have difficulty putting into words, partly through not being able to recognise my own emotions, and partly because my memory works in an odd way. In a sense, I have serial special interests, often delving deeply into a subject for a while before moving on. Just looking through my interests folder on my computer, and I know not all my interests are in that folder, and just starting alphabetically, uh, these start as about people, all things birds, archery, artificial intelligence, astronomy and cosmology, board games, books of all sorts, bridge, brackets, card games, camera and photography, capoeira, chess, climbing, computer science, dance, flying, brackets, aircraft. I could carry on, but you've probably got the idea. In 50 odd years, I've fitted in a lot of interests. However, what does it mean when I take a special interest? Taking a sampling, of, and actually I'll, I'll just start from the, almost like some of those last ones that are in the, in the, um, the list. Computer science. Right from age 11, when I arrived at senior school, the school had a microcomputer. It was a Commodore PET. I was immediately hooked. I spent whatever time I could where that computer was. I scored the highest score in the end of the year th exam in third year, getting 107%. Yep, I got bonus marks available on top of the top, on top of the full marks available. I went to the independent pet users group in the evenings, soaked up computing, introduced the deputy head of another school into computing. One of my French teachers berated me for spending so much time doing computing and thought it would damage where I got to. I took my computer science A-level early, about one year early, sorry, as this was the only way they'd let me do that and the other subjects I wanted to do. I even gave up a couple of lessons in machine code to classes. In, respect, I, in retrospect, I know that was poorly done. I cashed out all my savings to buy my first microcomputer, which had a little micro display, six, uh, seven, seven displays, and built circuit boards for it. Though I studied physics at university, all breaks and time for the first two years were spent on computers, even during like the evenings at weekends sometimes I would go in to the 24 hour area. Yep, I was an early computer hacker breaking into systems. I have so many stories. It's, it's, it's difficult to stop. An autistic trait. Oh yeah, my handle when I had a CB radio when I was young was computer kid. However, through many steps, I suppose this as part of my background led me to a career including being a technical director at GCHQ. Picking other subjects, flying. I flew small planes solo before I went solo in a car. Bridge, I was one of the founders of the school bridge club and subsequently used to play in division one of the Gloucestershire Bridge League. Bridge, however, is only one of the card games I play, even with another an Austrian card game called Königsriefen. I came third in a t tournament in Austria against other Austrians. About people. This has been almost an ongoing thing of me trying to understand how people work. 
when I was 12 or 13, I had started purchasing body language books, psychology books, etc., to, to try to understand people, and this 40 years before I was diagnosed autistic. My current primary interest is rock climbing and the indoor equivalent. Even though I started just over four years ago, I could easily write a book on the subject. My partner, whom I met at the International European Autism Conference, was a, was a climber, so I needed to learn. Going most days, I've watched hundreds of videos, yep, YouTube is my friend, read voraciously about the subject. Climbing enables me to be in a flow state where everything else can disappear. Fantastic problem solving. It's also super for fitness. I meet people and can socialize with climbing as a shared interest. Yep, I'm pretty sure there are many climbers who are also have a type of neurodiversity or neurodivergence. So this sounds great, but climbing is a good example of something I really enjoy. But what do I struggle with? A visit to the climbing wall or, rock climbing venue or a rock climbing venue feels a, a big mental effort till I start climbing. I know I will really enjoy it when I'm doing it, but I can prevaricate for hours before going and often don't if the day before day, day that precedes it has just become too overwhelming. The changeover from many tasks is difficult, as they are still a focus in my mind. I much prefer to go f first thing in the day. If it's later in the day, I may not just be able to sum up enough mental effort to go. However, it's not that I, I can be efficiently doing other things while I'm trying to go. I know full well, however, that once I start climbing, all will be well, no matter how bad things have been. So. I, I use a small number of strategies often to help. I sometimes just go, oh right, let's go to the local coffee shop, have a coffee, and it might be the one that they're climbing boy in the, in the cafe. Have a coffee, and then, not until you've finished, finished having the coffee and maybe a bit of food, do I, can I make the decision as to whether not to go climbing. It just makes it so much easier, because I'm just there, I've got all the kit together, etc. And it helps. Arranging a specific time to meet with a climbing partner, that also helps. Much of the time, I prefer though, if at the climbing wall to climb alone, on the auto belays or bouldering area, and I get stressed if I can't have time climbing alone, because this is when I feel I'm actually properly learning, because that's when I can properly concentrate. Alas, the climbing wall itself though, has changed its process around the daytime booking, and it's no longer as structured as it was. And I've not yet been able to overcome the mental difficulties to the changes this has brought. So now that now when I'm down in Gloucestershire, I, 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 I've just not been climbing since before Christmas there, at the Gloucester climbing wall. Other issues. Even though I'm undersensitive to many things, I am very sensitised to the presence of others. When there are too many other climbers around, the random noises and excessive awareness of others cause me not to concentrate properly. Many climbers, for instance, like encouragement when climbing. I find, however, it interrupts my climbing thought processes badly. That's even if someone says, oh, well done on some particularly difficult move. As I've improved, I can often get people climbing, watching me climb. It's common to watch good climbers to learn from them. And I find it almost just uses up some of my brain to ignore them, ignore them there. As one time, and I did find it funny, I was doing a series of routes and I became aware there was a group of lads who every time I reached, reached the top of a climb, I got applause. It, it meant gradually extra mental loading as I was just going up subsequent climbs, which made it slightly less enjoyable. But I knew it was all very friendly and they, were, they did quiz me afterwards about various aspects of climbing. I love learning about all the techniques as an undersensitive person, I know as somebody uh, who has difficulty feeling body position, climbing has been excellent in helping me develop a certain body awareness. It's been slow but great.
it's been a great social focus as well with safe topics, climbing and other all related things to talk about. I enjoy the feeling of being able to help others climb better also. Briefly, almost another area of special interest has been autism and all things about neuro neurodivergence and related attempts to, have it to improve the lives of others. It shaped a lot of my associated daytime activities recently and over the last small number of years. However, my difficulties with the executive function really hold me back on what I can actually accomplish. It does, however, give me a feeling of potentially helping others. I enjoy having messages also from my family and friends in different parts of the country when they've seen me talking on Oliver McGowan training. It's sort of like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a real demonstration of something going on. Anyway, thank you very much for listening, and I hope I've not bored you too much.